So I thought my last video about DSP was the last one I'd ever do. Apart from maybe if our interview happened, then that would be obviously content we would do together, but it wouldn't be like me talking about him, it would be me talking with him. I thought that would sort of put things to bed forever. No more drama, Phil said. No more conflict. Only peaceful gaming. But he just kind of ghosted me, left me on red in the DMs. He truly owned me. I'm not worth his time, I guess. And uh, that would be fine. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't really care if he had just ghosted me. It doesn't really make a difference. But then he just started talking about me all the time on his streams. And people started clipping it. So now I feel like I should weigh in a little bit on what he's been saying about me, considering he's been talking about me incessantly on, like, every stream for a little while. I guess his opinion on me has soured since we first spoke or since the first time that my video came out. And he was like, Tom's a good guy. At first, he was calling me a good dude, but I guess now he's not really enjoying my swag. He's on a different wave now, so uh, I guess consider this my response to DSP, probably for the final time. Ah, but there you go. Anyway, we'll see what happens. I don't, I'm not promising anything. As you guys know, I'm busy. I got a lot of stuff going on right now. I'm too busy, as you guys know. I, I'm a busy dude. I barely have any free time to do anything. We're juggling a lot of stuff, but I just want to throw that out there. I'm not, I'm not a closed off guy, and I'm not against fair discussion about anything and i'm not here to debunk anything either like i'm not upset that turkey tom made a documentary about me and i'm not here to, to say oh no i'm here to really slam you and tell you that you really hurt me or anything i actually don't care or even know what the impact is because i'm just doing my own thing i don't you know i'm probably the most laid-back guy about it at this point in my life i just don't care you know you tell me that anyone in their right mind would think that that's okay i'm sorry but I, anyone who's involved in this lol cow culture shit you got to get yourself fucking reassessed at a fucking professional. Go, I dare you, to go to a medical professional, a psychiatrist. Tell them you sit on the internet and all you do is you you bully people or you laugh at other people bullying people. And you, de you watch degrading content about people who you think are pathetic. And this is your actual source of enjoyment. Tell me that that's that what tell me what a medical professional would say in response to that So for this first video Phil discussed doing an interview with me and how he was open to it, right? He was down to clown in my pig pen He said he did not watch the documentary I made because he doesn't have time for it because he's such a busy guy As you guys know last week a documentary was released on me by Turkey Tom a youtuber um I've not seen it. I don't have time to watch it and everyone over basically like this uh, but why didn't I do a vlog on that? See what I mean? I don't have any time for anything. I wish I could. If I, literally, if there were two of me, one person today would have filmed multiple vlo entertaining vlogs for you here on the King of Hate Vlogs. The other person would have went and played Pokemon, and the other person would have went and played my bills and did the personal stuff. But this is life. You know, this is my life, and this is kind of the hectic life that I have uh, with even the stuff, my stuff that I put out. That's what a lot of people don't realize. Phil doesn't put out enough. He should be doing vlogs. I've told you guys, I'm staying out of drama this year, like purposefully. I guess in the busy schedule of being a Let's Player and having to press pay on a bill on his computer, he's just too caught up with things, you know? The lifestyle of a YouTube gamer truly is something I, and you guys cannot ever understand. Now, to an extent, if you're working hard on YouTube by putting out a lot of content, you can have a busy schedule, there's no denying that. But Phil's stuff is so low effort with such low production quality, I feel like he could film a Let's Play, film a vlog, stream, and pay his bills in one day. A Let's Play takes, what, an hour or two to record, maybe. A vlog could be two hours, maybe, if he's really pushing it, you know? I don't think DSP's life is that interesting, so I, I feel like it's pretty easy. He streams for four or five hours at a time, so you throw that on the end of it. And then paying bills, I mean, paying bills alone doesn't take 10 hours, that takes like 20 minutes, right? At the most, this is like a normal work day of things he needs to get done. If he wanted to watch the documentary, he could watch it. He doesn't need to, I'm not owed that, but realistically, if you want to find the time to do something, you can do it when you're a content creator. If there's some other reason behind not wanting to, to watch it, then just say that. Don't make up this excuse of your life being so hectic and insane that you can't watch one two-hour YouTube YouTube video. There are people out there with real jobs who genuinely do not have the time. So, I mean, this is a little bit insulting, right? It's not like his schedule is so packed. He's got to go to this office and that one. He's, he's in meetings all day. He just, he just can't find the time. Like, he could find the time if he wanted to. If there's some other reason, I think Phil should just say it. But Phil did see my follow-up on this channel where I said I wanted to interview him. And he once again was sure to make it abundantly clear in his response that he will not step within state lines of Daniel Keemington, also known as Keeming Star, the gnome star, the rat of YouTube, or meme star. I guess Turkey Tom actually came out with a video overnight, and basically it's his response video to me, and I guess he addresses some of the things that I said back about his documentary, and he said that he would be open to uh, some kind of a discussion, whether it be like a video call or on the Lal Cow podcast. Do you really think I'm going on the Lal Cow podcast? I mean, no. 
<laughs> nope. <laughs> Under absolutely no f***ing circumstances whatsoever would I have anything to do with anything Keemstar related. Um, or especially now Boogie related with, you know, basically what happened in the last year and stuff like that. Um, hell no. But, <clears throat> I will say this publicly. I have always been open to discussion with any of these people who wanted to do a documentary on me. There's never been a closed door policy, but no one's ever asked. People just release stuff on me, literally with no info from me or input from me, right? I mean, don't you think that maybe the documentary would be a little bit better if you get the side of the person you're actually covering in addition to everything else that you're already going to say? I'm just saying it probably would make it a more complete work, would it not? But that's never happened. In the 15 years I've been making content, not once has a person stepped forward and said, hey, I'd like your side before I make this giant video about you that's going to say a lot of negative things. If that is the case, I'm surprised. I feel like a DSP interview would be pretty good for anyone. In all fairness, I did ask for an interview after the fact, but regardless, it could be additive to the main video. And I think people would really like to see how he feels about its contents and about his life in general, which is what I told him, by the way. I didn't tell him it would be like a drama gotcha interview. I did tell him I would talk about some of his controversies, but I also wanted to talk about his community, the trolls, um, his whole history as a whole. And, and as a whole, I mean, the video that I made is mostly not my opinion. It's just telling his life story. So who better could there be to comment on a life story? than the guy who lived it, DSP. I don't know that he's going to be totally honest, but, you know, I, I might as well listen to him if I did a two-hour video, right? Like, I'm, I'm still willing. I guess Turkey Tom is now saying, oh, you know, well, now I'd like to talk to Phil. Well, after the fact, you know, it's not going to have as much of an impact. But, again, I'm not against it. Um, If he wanted to talk to me, there's avenues to contact me. You could DM me on x slash Twitter. You could send me an email, darksidephilahotmail.com. You know, all these avenues. Uh, I have all these ways you can contact me for any kind of professional level stuff. Oh my god. Like, I'm just so tired of this stupid shit. I really am. Um, if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine too. You know, I'm not asking for that. Like I said, I'm not out there se seeking interviews or anything like that. You know, I'm staying out of drama. But if there were any questions about, you know things said in the documentary or, you know, wanted to have a 30-minute discussion about it or whatever, yeah, I don't care. What's the big deal, right? The thing is, like I said, at this point, I realize this is going to go on forever. There's always going to be people making this kind of stuff. I'm not offended. I'm not going to stop them. Who cares? Who f cares, right? I have my own life. I have my own stuff to focus on. I'm Like I said, I'm staying out of the drama aspect of it, but it sure would be great if someone could contact me directly for once Rather than, oh, we have to talk in our own content. Like, I'm talking in my podcast and stuff about it and stuff. I, the, the avenues are always open. <laughs> so I don't know why people think I'm such a hard guy to reach or something. I have no clue. I really don't understand it. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, if he wants to actually talk with me or set something up, he has avenues to publicly do that, okay? Um, we'll see, I guess. Um the thing is, like, I'm not going to sit here. My, my whole agenda is I don't want to debunk the guy. I didn't even see the documentary. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what I've heard is he said certain things about when I was working at helicopter support. What bearing that has on today, I have absolutely no idea. It's a job that I held for four and a half years before I was a YouTuber. It has nothing to do with the last, like, 15 years of my life. So the reason I talked about helicopter support is because Phil talked about this job openly in, like, a public setting on his streams. I didn't have to really go dig for that or, like, go behind his back through some nefarious backdoor means to find it. Ooh, hacking! Um, it's it's just, like, I saw him talk about it on stream, so I put it in the video. And, it, and it's bearing on the modern day is that Phil talked about his job, and it led to his YouTube career. Not directly, but, like, it was a part of his story to get there. It was a stepping stone. So I thought it would be good to include it as a part of his life, considering I'm making a two-hour video about his life and career. All of it from his birth until now, with everything in between, I tried to cover. To me, it made sense to include that in the video. And it would be apparent if you saw the video, but as he says 30 different times across 30 different streams, he didn't see it because he doesn't have the time. I, I didn't even see the documentary. <laughs> so to be clear, I was still open to that discussion. But then this video came out from his stream titled DSP Goes Full Ballistic on Turkey Tom Situation. Guess we're in for a ride. First, he responds to me defending the title of my video, which was Dark Side Phil, A Decade of Failure. Well, Phil doesn't feel he's a failure. He's in a great mental space. Good for him. And if he doesn't want to be in drama and he's happy, good for him. I'm happy for him. But that doesn't mean that essentially he couldn't have been better, that he couldn't have made better decisions, and that for the last 10 years... He's been on the decline, and I consider that failure. 
So really, it's a perspective thing. You know, I don't consider it failure. I do. I would consider it absolutely decline or, like I said, a downward slope. I don't think that it's failure because failure would be, I'm insanely desperate. I'm going out of business, right? Uh, I don't have any other re recourse. Everything is falling apart at the seams here, right? So I'm desperate and I'm doing crazy stunts for money every day, like sucking cucumbers and kissing chickens. Oh, I'm sorry. That was not me. I know I, I like taking stabs at Review Tech USA because I can't believe he still does that shit. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not the case. I'm still someone who's true to myself, makes the content that I enjoy and my viewers enjoy. I have a full, uh, 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 you know, this belief system that I stand by and I can still do that and I'm still successful. I'm still operating a successful business. So again, I disagree. Except that last night I got the notification that I have no money and I was like, that really sucks. You know, every money, every day the money I get from tips I'm transferring to my bank account. Um, so essentially I'm, I must be, I'm overdrawn, um, for them to tell me that I have that, you know, the, the notice that you are, you know, no balance or whatever with him saying it's failure. He thinks that's failure. That's a subjective thing. And he has the right. And he even says, I titled it to try to make it entertaining. I get it. It's called clickbait. You know, it is, it's a clickbait title. You want people to watch the documentary. You make it overly dramatic. You have a, a, a thumbnail of me insanely close up. Like this. Like this is the thumbnail of the video that he makes of me. Like this. Like you could see the boogers in my nose. And you could see like... Oh, <laughs> Hi. A decade of failure. Hi. How are you? Right? It's like, I get it. That's YouTube. That's the shtick of YouTube. That's what you do. Right? <laughs> People are like, Jesus, stop. Back up. <laughs> What? You don't like getting up close and personal with your favorite YouTuber? You don't like that hair? What's in my mouth? Ah. Phil's getting a little silly here, guys. It looks like he's having uh, too good of a time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's safe to say that the title probably bothers him uh, more than he's letting on, but you know what? I can't harp on that forever. Whatever. Stop this! Sometimes in the video, he says things, and I'm like, wow, that really resonates. That sounds great. And then he'll say something that immediately like contradicts it and makes it feel like almost like a red flag. And I'll, let me tell you. So he'll be like, you know, he said to, uh, he said to his audience, he wants to keep out of drama, and I respect that, and I get that. If he really is happy in his mental space where he is, and he likes the, what he's doing, then there's no reason, you know, for him to, to to do anything further, you know. But then he'll say immediately after that. But you know, if he would just watch my two hour documentary and do a big live react to it, that would be good content for him. That would be good content for me because then I could re-react back to his reaction and then we could do more. And I was like, I'm listening to it. I'm like, so I get it. What it is, is there is now a community on YouTube, okay? It's, it's a vicious circle kind of a deal where someone says something and it could be, it could be innocuous. It could be like a little comment. Someone responds to it. Then someone responds back to it. Then the reaction community watches the, the statement, the response, the response of the response, and they create the next level of content out of that. And it just becomes this giant circle of spinning content of people all reacting to drama. All right? And you might think, well, that's, a, that's, a, that's the healthy YouTube ecosystem, right? That's absolutely what it's all about so dsp seems to have a problem with the commentary community and like people who make videos on lol cow types at large like him and boogie basically he doesn't like how they roll i admit the endless cycle of response video to response video to response video is kind of gay even now i'm doing a response to a response to my video i made a video about phil he responds on his stream i respond on my channel in a video he responds again on his stream and here i am again we've got like five layers of response but with this situation like he's talking about me directly in a public setting i feel like it's my prerogative if I want to respond or not. And I also don't think the drama content is like beneath anyone. All Phil does is like play video games for hours and hours a day. I don't see that as like having more artistic or societal merit in any way than somebody who makes videos talking about stupid internet drama, you know? You know what, Phil? If you don't want to do a drama video, we should do a gaming video. Hop on Roblox. I'll school you in Arsenal. Or maybe I won't because maybe you're a good gamer. It would be amazing, okay? It would be amazing. The fans would love it. The viewers would love it, okay? The detractors would love it. All right, last year, before all this drama with the Lal Cow podcast, okay, I was friendly with Boogie. Over the years, we had had a few conversations behind the scenes, 
uh, back and forth. Uh, not long conversations, very short ones, brief ones, a little, little, you know, how you doing? Hope you're doing all right or whatever. Back and forth, like like Twitter DMs and shit like that, right? <laughs> okay. And one of the conversations that we had had was about particularly working together on something. Um, and at this point, there was a situation where we were talking early on about this Lol Cow podcast and the possibility and stuff like that, right? And I'm going to paraphrase it, or I'm not going to sit here and read the direct DMs I had with Boogie. This was over a year ago. This, so again, this was before any of the drama of this year or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> but basically, the conversation we had, and this, I really feel, this is the difference between myself and the other people who people consider lol cows, all right? When you look at the Wings of Redemptions, when you look at the Boogies, and you look at these people, all right? Here's the difference between me and them, all right? And this is what you're going to understand. It's a lot different. As we're having this conversation, we're talking about the possibility of working with Keemstar on a podcast or whatever, right? So basically, Boogie said something to the effect... And by the way, I think this ad, this stream is about to play ads. No, I'm telling a story. I'm going to skip the ads, okay? Um, basically... The way he equated it, I know this is weird because I didn't bring this up. He did. Boogie actually said something to the effect of the way he sees YouTube or, or how YouTube is, is kind of like Walmart. All right? So let's think about that. It's kind of like Walmart. Well, Walmart, everyone knows, is a pretty bad business. Right? Walmart comes into town with the lowest prices, the lowest cost for, for their products. And when a Walmart comes to town... They sweep in and they take over. They could cause all the small businesses in a town to go completely out of business. All right? They, sadly, underpay and mistreat their employees. It's well documented that they do this. Okay? And the employees are overworked, underpaid, not trained. Right? They'll have someone who's a door greeter, who's an elderly person. This is their job. This is great. They have a living. Oh, you're fired. We don't need you anymore. Well, why? Why? What did I do? You didn't do anything wrong. We just don't want to pay anymore. Bye. Right? This is how they are. This is their company. And there's countless stories of Walmart being a bad company in this regard. Now, Walmart is a fine company. They don't break laws. They do everything law-abiding and, you know, they're on the up and up. But, man, when they come in, they can completely wipe clean a small town. And now the whole town's focused on the Walmart. Right? Now, you could argue <clears throat> plot positives and negatives about that. Right? Walmart. Now we got to shop at Walmart and there's nothing we can do about it. So now it's a Walmart town. Right? That's YouTube. In a nutshell. That's literally YouTube. And that's this low cow culture on YouTube. What you found is you found people who are so desperate. Right? They need to make money. In some way. They can't just operate anymore and have a life on YouTube. For some reason, maybe they, you know their popularity has waned. Maybe... They just made a ton of mistakes or whatever. And the only way that they can get attention on YouTube is by creating drama. So what they do is they create the drama. They know the drama's toxic. They know that it's harmful. They know that it's not good. But that's the only way that they can get by. So they sit there and they create drama. This is a real cycle that some people like Boogie fall into for sure. And it's kind of a sad thing to see. But this is a personal failing by people like Boogie to constantly respond to everyone. Even Phil himself is doing it by what he's saying right here. He's responding. He's part of the cycle. And by responding to me instead of doing an interview or instead of just ignoring me outright, he's kind of fueling this whole thing a little bit where he just rolls the ball bigger and bigger and bigger. And now, the way I even found these clips is not on Phil's channel. It's on these other DSP clip channels, which I assume he makes no money from because he doesn't run them. I mean, imagine if he clipped this himself or had someone clip it, put a picture of my face or my little, you know, cringy avatar in the thumbnail with him and called it responding to Turkey Tom. Imagine the money he would make from responding to Turkey Tom. That's probably 100,000 views right there, especially if he dropped it right after my video came out. The ad revenue would be pretty nice too because, you know, Phil likes to talk for a long time, so it'd probably be a 35-minute video. But instead, these clip guys like Duty Streams and DSP Tries It, Memology 101, are just going to collect all of that revenue. If you don't want drama, Phil, then just don't respond to it at all. Instead of these long diatribes about how you're not going to respond while also responding at the same time. I love energy drinks, which is why I'm proud to be sponsored by the best guys in the game at it, G Fuel. They sent me a bunch of stuff, including four of these Dream Demon energy drinks. They sent me four, and I only have one left to show you guys because I drank all the other ones because I like it so much. They taste great, they have zero calories, and they get me personally wired as hell when I'm editing videos or playing games. I feel electrified. This stuff is like injecting adrenaline 
adrenaline straight into your veins with a syringe. Except it comes in a can and in tubs, so you don't have to drink it, and you won't look like an addict. They have a bunch of these tubs, which are an energy drink as well, but it's just powder that you pour into water, and then you can drink it whenever you want. This one right here is called Hype Sauce, and it tastes like raspberry lemonade. Really good. This one is called Pog Juice for whenever you want to uh, soy face. <laughs> This one is super cool. It's called Ice Cream, and it's a collaboration with the PlayStation game, Twisted Metal, and it has a sour strawberry cotton candy flavor. And they also made sure to send me this one specifically, which is called Clickbait. They were very adamant that I show you guys this one, probably because uh, they've been watching the vids. They know what we're all about. And right now, G Fuel is doing a buy one, get one sale for Black Friday. You can get your hands on two fantastic BOGO exclusive flavors. On the first day, Monday, they're introducing Spiced Orange, as well as the Blacklight edition of their classic PewDiePie flavor. The first 5,000 Customers who order a Blacklight Edition tub will also receive a free G Fuel blended Blacklight keychain while supplies last. Orders over $70 will also include a free Glow in the Dark shaker, also while supplies last. You guys can get one G Fuel energy tub and get a second one for free. And you don't even need a code for that one. There's also an exclusive stainless steel Blacklight shaker cup that launches the first day of buy one, get one free. And G Fuel is always adding new flavors to their site. So get it while supplies last. Do not wait. Very limited quantity. I love G Fuel. You know G Fuel, and you should love it if you don't already. It's it's good for your soul. It's good for your productivity. Listen, guys, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. All of the Fortnite gats will be begging you to share some when they find out that you have G Fuel. So what are you waiting for? Grab a tub, get some energy drinks, and be sure to use code TURKEY at checkout so they know that I sent you. All right, now back to the video. Thanks, guys. So literally, the reason he wants me to watch his documentary is for more content for himself. Do you understand? He admits it right there in the video. He says it. Dark side filled the lol cow. And then he says at the end of the video, well, you know, unless Phil decides to actually do this interview with me, I think I'm done milking him. <laughs> milking him. I want you to again think about that. All right? And then I started to read into what people were saying about Tom and or other things going on and I started reading messages and basically here's the information that I got overnight are you aware that Turkey Tom is part of this lol cow culture and lol cow cast I didn't know that I wasn't I don't watch it I'm not paying attention to it oh yeah he's he's called one of the lol cow farmers him and Mudahar and others they're showing up to every show and they're not highlighted like lol cows they're highlighted like like big shots, right? They come to the show in order to basically degrade the subjects of the show, which at this point I guess is Boogie and and Wings and whoever this other person is who was my replacement cuz I didn't do the show even though you can't replace someone who never agreed to do the show. Um but whoever they are, I guess, right? They're basically it's like a shooting gallery. Like here's the people who are supposed to be the hosts but in reality, they're just the targets of ridicule and toxic behavior. It, again, they're just people shooting down at them. That's the show. That's apparently what this show is. And Turkey Tom is one of these people who essentially, oh yeah, you see, we're, we're better than them, so it's for, time for us to shoot down at them and basically insult them and do this kind of up stuff to them constantly. All right? And... For what I'm not under, and again, I'm not watching this show. I have nothing to do with it. I want nothing to do with it. But people contact me. People actually contacted me this week and said, Phil, you have no idea. You made the absolutely, positively, 100% correct decision to not work with Keemstar and be on that show. You predicted it completely correctly. This was not a show where it was going to be the host talking about topics intelligently, respectfully. It's literally the ridicule those people show. That's the whole point. And it's just gross. It's toxic. It's insulting. From what I'm going to understand, they're being degraded to the point where I guess Boogie was forced to get on his hands and knees and apologize to Keemstar because he went on someone else's show 
and there was drama and he's like you should have done that on our show to make us money now apologize to me that you did this because you're so stupid boogie did do that he did get on all fours that's true but once again he doesn't have to be a part of that show additionally i take great offense to my characterization by phil as a farmer i respect the animals i work with i love and care for them i give them a wonderful amazing life and i respect their natural order they're fed well they have lots of other animals to play with and i even name them but like any good farmer there comes a time when the animal has become plump it's become ripe and fully grown and it's time to slaughter the harvest is coming phil i hope you've been eating well we wouldn't want you to be too small for store shelves and end up in a meat grinder getting turned into dog food instead of having a dignified funeral being put in some plastic wrap at a Publix. but in all seriousness i don't show up on every lol cow podcast to be clear i just show up on the farmer episodes once a month and as for boogie <laughs> on his hands and knees begging for forgiveness i'm sorry jordy i'm fucking sorry it was fucking stupid of me to go on Rich's fucking show and give away the fucking storyline. I'm a fucking attention hog piece of shit. It was fucking stupid. I should have left the moment Muda came on. I'm, I'm fucking stupid. And I'm fucking sorry. I understand your decision. I'll hand over any passwords you need, whatever you want. Sorry. I mean, he chose this. He didn't have to do this. He wanted to apologize to Keemstar. He wanted to make Keemstar feel like he really felt bad. Keemstar didn't even tell him he would be like off the show if we didn't do this. He just kind of said it as like a joke in a moment of anger because he was mad at Boogie for giving away the content intended for the LolCal podcast to Reutech USA. And yet Boogie decided to do it because who would expect anyone to get on their knees in real life and beg for forgiveness on video? Well, when it comes to Boogie2988, I guess we can always expect the unexpected. And Phil overall expresses distaste for the LolCal culture, I guess like making fun of these guys that exist i guess he doesn't like channels like mine overall is like a is like a concept i'm wise to this shit. i when you tell me that the name of the show is the lol cow show or the lol cow podcast there's no respect there's no intention of actually helping people or doing something positive that's a toxic show that's the point from the day it was incepted i knew that was the point you know that's why i want nothing to do with it i'm so here and again here's the difference boogie and wings they shop at Walmart, right? Anything to get ahead, anything to make a buck, anything to fucking get them to a position where they're, they're doing something because they need that, right? I don't need that. I'm, I'm successful. I have a business. I'm good. People come and watch my content. They enjoy my content. They support my content. I do positive content all day. I don't do this lol cow shit. People try to pull me into their spinning vortex of drama shit. So, but I stay out of it. So why would I want to be involved in a show like that? I'd be a moron, right? And if anything, this is right now representative when you if you're here every day that level of shit. My involvement with Boogie and Wings was going to be a positive podcast where we talk, we interact, we have good topics about things, maybe talk about our lives, our personal situations, you can talk about current events in the news and everything. Dude, I do this every day on my own show. Do you think it would be that hard to do it with two other people who we just talk? It would be an easy show to do. And by the way, it wouldn't be toxic. It would be fun to do. And everyone else out there could react to the show and do their own toxic shit about it. And I'm sure they would. But at least the core show would be great. And it would be good for our, our viewer bases and our communities and our audiences. That's what I wanted to do. But apparently, this is more important than that. Right? Taking this big paycheck to be on this toxic ass show where it's a bunch of bullies in a shooting gallery is more important than actually doing something positive for the internet, positive for your audience. You know what I'm saying? Nope, I don't know what you mean. The thing about someone like Phil or these other dudes is they could be benefiting from their situation way more than they are right now, which is what this podcast is intended to be. It's a business that's going to be making some decent money for those involved, especially if the viewership stays as strong as it is right now. They're going to have no problem pulling in tens of thousands a month even. And realistically, I'm also trying to take these lol cow or like weird internet person documentaries to the next level, which I've been talking about a little bit with you guys for a while. As some of you may know, I recently posted a video to my main channel about vegan gains called YouTube's Most Psychotic Vegan. Vegan, and in that video, I actually met Vegan Gaines in real life. Now, I wouldn't call Vegan Gaines a lol cow, but he is like kind of a weird internet guy who's very hated, and I thought that it would be a good idea to meet up with him and get his perspective on his history. And by the end of the video, I think a lot of people ended up liking him a lot more than they did initially. I mean, I would consider myself to be friends with Richard by the end of that video. And with this interview with Phil, I was hoping to get more of that. And I also would be willing to film with Phil in person with my camera crew if he wanted to. But it seems like now, that's probably just not going to happen if I had to guess. Maybe it was wishful thinking on my part from the beginning like maybe i should have just not gotten my hopes up about that but you can't say i didn't try okay you tell me that anyone in their right mind would think that that's okay 
I'm sorry, but I, anyone who's involved in this lol cow culture, you got to get yourself reassessed at a fucking professional. Go, I dare you to go to a medical professional, a psychiatrist. Tell them you sit on the internet and all you do is you you bully people or you laugh at other people bullying people and you de you watch degrading content about people who you think are pathetic and this is your actual source of enjoyment tell me that that's that what tell me what a medical professional would say in response to that I would love to hear it. I think you guys all need to take this very seriously. A psychologist is waiting to take two to $300 a session to hear you talk about how you're a psychotic person because you watch Down the Rabbit Hole, Sunny V2, and a Turkey Tom videos. You're all seriously effed up. You tell me, what is the issue? He's a f But of course, this is the kind of thing Phil's gonna say because he wants to paint everyone who doesn't like him as like psychotic. There are nut jobs like Fred the guy who went crazy basically in targeting Phil and imploded his whole little troll group chat. But the majority of casual viewers just like watching dumb shit on the internet like I do and like all of you guys do. It's not that serious. It's just, a, you know, a practice of laughing at funny stuff online. So, I watch a 20-minute video from Turkey Tom. It's my only content of his I've ever watched. And I find the guy's well-spoken. He's charismatic. He's intelligent. He can make a point well. I disagree with him on the point of the fact that he thinks that I've had 10 years of failure. And that's okay. We can have that subjective disagreement and agree to disagree. But the moment that he says, oh, you see, I just wish he would react to the, the documentary because that would give me more content. Then I could talk about it on the lolcast or he can come on the podcast and then we have even more content to make. And then I could milk him further, but for now I'm done milking him. All right? That's f***ing disgusting. That's not even like a joke. That's not funny. That's not... That's vile, alright? That's toxic, that's harmful, that's fucked up. That kind of, and the fact that you can just nonchalantly say something like that, oh yeah, I'm done milking someone today. I want you to know how disgusting that sounds. You're milking a human, okay? Not even for sus, you're not milking them for milk, you're milking them for profits, for money. And every time you do that, you hurt them. But you don't care. There's no, no, there's no, no, no quality, you know, no, no moral compass here. Who cares, right? You're dehumanizing the person. You're turning them, you're literally categorizing them as a as an animal, not a human. You're you've degraded them to the point that they're just cattle. Alright? That's really fucked up. It is. It's completely messed up. It I can't believe people think that's okay. I think Phil takes us a lot more seriously than almost anyone else does. He said himself that he's not really mentally affected or bothered by my video, so this angle that the video could hurt his feelings seems weird. Unless it did hurt his feelings and he's sort of in denial about it. But the goal of my content, to be clear, to like make a to make a statement, a public statement addressing the milking allegations, is not to be outright mean and bully someone. I try to avoid that. It's just about making an entertaining product while talking about interesting people. Now, obviously, when I talk about someone who's sort of downtrodden on the internet, I'm not going to pretend that I'm like making a positive video on them. Like the video on Phil is called a decade of failure. It, it has a negative slant to it. It's a negative video, right? But that doesn't mean I'm wishing like harm upon him. I don't want him to be unhappy. I don't want his life to be terrible. I don't want people to go harass him. I just want to make a good video. When I use the term milk, it's not meant to be taken so seriously. I just meant I would make another video about Phil if the opportunity presented itself. And the rest of the video is mostly Phil kind of cringing at lol cow culture, which I mean, fair enough. There are parts of it that are very cringe. He's saying that the lol cow mockery could easily be flipped on anyone who makes videos on these people like myself. And that's true. You could do a video calling me embarrassing or cringe for a number of reasons and that's completely your prerogative if you want to do that but the nature of the internet is that anyone can make a video about anyone on this magical site we all call youtube and if you choose to intentionally publicize your most wild embarrassing entertaining downtrodden moments then someone might want to talk about it or compile it into a larger video especially if you have a lot of eyes on you like phil does so again phil i'll give you credit for this you did make the right decision and not doing this interview because i don't think it would have worked out for you you would have you would have coming you would have came out looking terrible and i'm kind of sad you didn't do it because it's just it's more it's more content for me to milk you know because i like to milk the cows especially you phil and it's sad you're not going to do it but uh from your perspective i think you made the right decision i think this would have been a very bad move for you because it would have ended up 
on the Low Cal Live podcast. It would have. I mean, to an extent, this is true. I also want to give Phil some leeway and just have a nice conversation for a bit, but I would have to ask him a few pressing questions that I feel should be answered. Regardless, it looks like now that interview is just not going to happen, really. If you guys like this video, be sure to leave a like. If you disliked it, be sure to leave a dislike and drop a comment down below with your thoughts. It's always good to hear what you guys have to say. This is probably the last real, for real, the last DSP video, because even if he responds to me again, I can't imagine what I could possibly add at this point, really, or what he could possibly add. Uh, so so yeah, probably would be retreading the same ground we've already walked, and I don't want to do that endlessly unless Phil gives me an excuse to by talking about me again and saying something truly, truly new, which I don't think is going to happen. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Bye. And be sure to become a member. For $5 a month, they get the members-only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get. Thanks so much for your support. No